the Rolls-Royce Phantom's proportions are surpassed only by its reputation. As an icon of pop culture, it has become a celebrity favorite, a far cry from the more genteel clientele of its ancestors. We all have those special days in our lives, those significant moments that will forever be etched into our memories. I mean, think about things like your first kiss, your wedding day, the birth of your kids, driving a Rolls Royce. This is on everyone's bucket list. It is in theory, I guess, like the Everest of motoring. For me though, now that I'm about to get to the top, is it going to be as beautiful a view as I always imagined? The Johannesburg city centre is probably the last place you'd picture yourself driving a Rolls Royce, but in this haphazard environment, the car's colossal dimensions do give it a useful authority over lesser machines. Now I'm not having a real vain moment over here, I'm just making sure this is actually me. It's kind of one of those pinch you moments, you know, where you actually can't believe you're sitting in the back of a five-star hotel, also known as a Rolls Royce Phantom. The challenge is, I'm not um, blessed with a disgusting amount of money. I don't come from a family that is opulently rich. For the people that are in that position, they just so, seem to always know what to do and how everything works. For me at the moment, it feels like the first time I flew in business class. You know, you've got all these buttons and you're trying to act all cool, like you know what they do. Let's try and figure it all out. Hang on, hang on, before we, before we do. Uh, you've, just got, you've got to do this. Lambs wool carpeting. Guys, let me tell you, you're not driving this car. You want to have, oh. <laughs> oh, I, don't know, I don't know if lamb and orgasmic go together. Uh, probably in Australia it does, but right now um, it's going to work in South Africa too because this is how you want to be cruising around. Barefoot, it is, it's decadent. I mean, I, I've been into Lani hotels that don't even have carpeting that plush. This is the level of detail the bespoke tailoring, the coach building that goes into a Rolls Royce. And the best part about it is, I've always been thinking I'd love to drive the car, and I have driven it. But the further back you move in the Phantom, I think the more important you are. With the tinted windows, everyone's wondering kind of who is the big shot in the back. When you see him driving the car, they know that you are definitely just the driver, the chauffeur, the hired hand. Maybe this just me, but I think this is where I'd like to spend most of my time. I can sit here doing my work, tapping away on my iPad, if I feel like watching a DVD, no problem. This little table also flips up as a screen, so now I've got myself set up. This is pretty cool as well. They had the old BMW iDrive system uh, on the previous Phantom, which came out in 2003, and it was probably the biggest complaint with that original Phantom was that that was the one bit that they didn't like. Well, it's got the new updated our drive system and just to show you how important the passenger is as opposed to the driver I've got full access and control to all this sort of stuff so I can turn it on go onto the menus select radio that's probably the only little catch is that if you have a look from a driver's perspective the little screen that opens up on your dash looks exactly like the one you'll find in a 3 series but I suppose on the flip side most guys who can afford to pay whatever the 6 million rand tag have probably never been in a BMW so wouldn't know that there's that sort of shared value to it as well. The Phantom lineage stretches back to 1925 and the car draws many of its styling cues from its predecessors, most notably the Phantom 6 limousine. This is of course the second series of the new Phantom and as such it displays a host of very discreet upgrades. The round main beam headlights have made way for rectangular units while only the keenest observers will spot the subtle revisions to the badges and bright work. It is when you open the signature coach doors and step aboard the Phantom that you realize where a considerable portion of your hard-earned millions has been spent. While under the skin, the car boasts a space frame that is manufactured by robots in Norway, Denmark and Germany, most of the interior fittings are handmade by British craftsmen. And to give you some idea of the sumptuousness of the appointments, between 15 and 18 cattle hides are used to line the vast cabin. But it really is a lot of detailing. I mean, when you sit into the car, I don't have to do anything. I have to close the door, I push the button, the door closes by itself. I've got mood lighting, so I can adjust the lighting according to do I want to do work or do I just want to have a nice, relaxed, calming drive home. You can set it all up. Things like this, this is the detailing. You know, when you want to get out of the car, you've got a grip over here, you've got this handle to help you as well. So they really have thought of everything. From a drive perspective, 
I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very easy car to drive, believe it or not. At six meters in length, I thought, oh, this could be a bit of a challenge. Maybe that is why you only ever see these sort of cars on an airport run or pulling up at a hotel because they don't know how to park the thing. I drove it yesterday, parked it in normal parking bays, went into shopping areas, no hassle. Very, very easy to drive because it's got all your camera access points around the car. The only thing is, for me, when I drive a car, I want to hear it. I really do. And yeah, you've got a 6.75 litre V12 engine with like 330 odd kilowatts. You don't hear it. It is so insulated, this car. It is so quiet with the double glazed glassing that you don't even know that the engine is on. Great from a driving perspective in the beginning, but at the end of the day, if I'm really getting my hands on the wheel, I want to feel those sensations. From a, a ride comfort perspective, wafting is probably the best way to describe it because you literally do glide along. One thing that's also quite quirky is the steering wheel reminds me of the old sailor days. Super, super thin. Everyone that I've spoken to is like, oh no, a steering wheel's got to be meaty. In a Rolls it doesn't because you don't need to grip a wheel. Nothing's going to happen fast. The car's not going to dynamically change lanes. It glides. You literally can steer your Rolls with two fingers. It is a real special occasion. I think that is what it is. We chatted to one of the owners of a, of a Rolls yesterday when he picked this car up at Daytona Group. And I was just curious. He did like, you know, so uh, how do you drive this car? And he said when he gets home from work, if he's going out in his Rolls, he doesn't just hop in in his work clothes. He actually showers, gets changed, puts on a whole new outfit and goes out in his Rolls. And I think that's a type of sophistication, the type of level that you're appealing to if you can afford to buy a Rolls Royce, especially the Phantom.